So this is our cheese souffle. I'm gonna show you how to make this. Everybody can make this. This is so simple. This is a foolproof cheese souffle. The beautiful thing about it is you can even make it in advance, couple of days before and reheat them. I'm gonna show you how to make it. This is a perfect, easy brie, goat cheese, parmigiano reggiano souffle. I'm gonna show you how to make it. Remember, if you like the video, subscribe, gives us a thumbs up and ring the bell. Okay, let me show you how easy it is to make that cheese souffle. Um, I got a bunch of cheese, you know, I love cheese. Cheese and butter. <laughs> so, um, in the cheese souffle, I'm gonna put some shallots and some sun-dried tomatoes. And I'm gonna let those cook for a minute before I get into the actual souffle. So I'm gonna let those cook slowly while I'm talking to you. I'm gonna let them do their thing, okay? Maybe just a little bit more shallots. Probably, um, and then we're gonna put them in. Now, a, um, a class classical cheese souffle is not difficult to make. It's a Mornay sauce, which is a bechamel with cheese, where you fold in some egg white, you make it rise, and as soon as it's beautiful resin, you serve it, you hope it doesn't fall, and, uh, and you have a cheese souffle. That is really, really not difficult to make. Um, when I was in the restaurant business, I've been in the restaurant business my whole life, and uh, when I was in the restaurant business, uh, we always had the issue, the souffle is ready, get the waiter to the table immediately before the souffle falls. And, uh, and sometimes the customer was not ready, sometimes the table was not clean, oh, mama me. We had to go immediately and serve the souffle. So it was always this issue about souffle falling. So my whole 20, 30 years in the restaurant business, I was like, how do we get the souffle not to fall? And I tried everything. I tried a bunch of different recipes and things, and somehow I could just never get to the right thing. And one day I'm in the shower, and I'm thinking, what about if I add some bread into the, um, the souffle, the cheese souffle? Oh, no, we're going to test the bread, and it's going to be there. It's going to be doughy. So I said I tried. So I tried it, but I had left the crust the first time I tried. I already see the piece of crust in the cheese souffle. That was not good. So what I decided to do is I'm going to take some bread, like a, a country bread, and I'm going to remove the crust. And what I found out is... This is a little different. This is more of a custard than we're going to make instead of a Mornay sauce. It's got almost the same ingredient, except the flour. Instead of putting it in the form of, uh, of raw flour, we're putting it in the form of bread. Now, let me tell you what's fine, uh, fascinating, and you're going to find it fascinating too. When you bake that bread without the crust in the custard environment, the bread will deconstruct itself back to flour and water, and you won't even know then the bread is in there, and it will give the souffle structure. So the souffle is not, it's going to fall a little bit, but we don't care, because that's the kind of souffle you can make ahead. You can make this souffle the day before your dinner party. What do you think of that? Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do it. It's really, really, really cool, okay? First, we're getting some bread, and we got a country bread. We we'll remove the crust, and we cut in little cubes, and we're going to fill up each ramekin, souffle ramekin, are about a third in the bottom with the bread. So first what we do is we spray our, our container with a little nonstick spray, okay? Just a little bit. You can put butter, you can put nonstick spray. So what I do is I go and put the Parmesan. You see, look, I put the Parmesan cheese right there, and now I got rum and the Parmesan cheese in there, right? Now I can put my bread. <laughs> Thank goodness I caught myself. <laughs> so now I got Parmesan over Giano. I don't need the bread anymore. I got my shallots and my sun-dried tomato that I'm cooking. I'm going to let those cook for a little while. And now we're going to make a custard. And, and a custard is made with egg and cream. Now, the cheese I'm going to put in here. I'm going to put cheddar, parmigiano-reggiano, gruyere, and more parmigiano-reggiano. <laughs> I got the parmigiano-reggiano right there. Oh, and goat, 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 goat. I'm going to put some goat cheese in there. I love goat cheese. You know, I put goat cheese in everything. Put whatever cheese you want in here. Oh, oh, brie cheese too. And you know what I do with the brie? I freeze it for a few minutes, like a half hour maybe. And then I, uh, I remove the crust with a vegetable peeler. And then I cut it in little cubes. So now I got my brie in there. You can put the brie in a custard like with the other cheese too. But I wanted to show you what I do with the brie. 
So you have it right there, right? You don't have to put brie in there. You can put whatever cheese you want. So now we're going to make the custard. All right, so we got our eggs right there, and we got our cream. Now let me tell you, this is the kind of recipe you don't need a recipe with, four. Let me explain you why. Because you're making four of those, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four eggs. Cream, the amount of cream is one-third or whatever the container is. So if you have a six-ounce container, it's two ounces of cream. It's when you have a five-ounce container, then you have issue. <laughs> so you know what I do? I put a little extra cream in there. Anyway, so we have it. So the cream is hot. So now we're going to put a little cheese in the cream, okay? We got Gruyere right there. We got cheddar. I use a beautiful English cheddar. I use, this is my three favorite cheese that I use when I cook. Parmigiano Reggiano. Then we got a brie in there. And then we're going to put a little bit of goat cheese. This is kind of like what I use when I make a potato au gratin. I use the same deal of cheese, same uh, mixture of cheese. Now we're going to melt our cheese. Right? We got the heat going. Well, we did have the heat going. <laughs> now we have it back. Right? And then we're going to do, we're going to let this cook for a minute. We're going to let the cheese melt. That's what we're doing. We're letting the cheese melt. And uh, we're going to do the sun-dried tomatoes. Let me get a spoon. A fork will have to do, I guess. And we're going to put our shallots that have been lightly sautéed. You could also put some mushroom in there, friends. You can put some mushrooms, spinach, scallions. You can put a bunch of vegetables in there, but whatever you put in here, just make sure it's cooked, okay? It's sautéed anyway, just lightly like I just did those right there. And if you put some on the side, pick it up so you don't look like a slab. <laughs> you know, it'd be good also in there, friends, is uh, chives. You could put some chives in there, all right? It'd be perfectly fine. It gives us a nice color right there, right? All right? So remember what we have in here. Now we're going to put that. Um, all right, let's check our custard. Make sure our custard is ready. Let me turn the heat off. I don't need the, hot, the heat anymore. We're going to melt that cheese. All I'm interested in right now is just melting that cheese. And then we're going to break the egg. So we're going to put a little salt and pepper. We don't need a lot of salt and pepper because we got the cheese, right? And then we're going to do this. We're going to break the egg. Now all I got to do is temper my eggs. And um, now the fact that the egg has the white in it, it's not as, you know what, I got my emotion blender right there. I'm just going to go with it. I'm, I always got this guy ready. <laughs> because you, look, see, it makes it really easy now. I guarantee you that cheese is melting. <laughs> I always got that in my emotion blender ready to go, let me tell you. I always got that ready to go. I always got that ready. You see? There you go. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take that cream and we're going to pour it on top of our eggs. When you have the white of the egg, you don't have to be that concerned about protecting the, yolk, the yolks. The, the white protects it really good. So I poured it a little bit. You can do it slow if you want, but it's really not necessary. So here we have it, right there. All I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a ladle so I can work nice and clean. And I'm going to pour that in here. There you go. There you go. I guess I'm going to make more souffles as soon as I'm done taping this. Because I got plenty more to go right here, folks. Here we go. There you go. Look at this. Oh, yeah. So now let me tell you what I do. I do one more thing. I make sure that it's filled, right? And then I take a fork and I make sure that my bread is totally submerged. Totally submerged. Totally soaked. So then it will, and I'm telling you, when you eat this, you won't even know the bread was in there. You won't even know it in there. Completely decompose, completely deconstruct. 
But here we have it. Here we have it. Here we have it. Right there, friends. Now, I go all the way to the top. I want to make sure they filled up all the way. You may want to wait a little bit, a few seconds, to make sure your bread is totally, totally soaked. If it's not, then do it like this. Take your time. Take your time. Make sure the bread is totally, totally submerged, okay? And filled up all the way to the top. Make sure your oven is preheated at 375 degrees. Because if your oven is not preheated, you always have to make sure you have a preheated oven. Eh? That is very important. There we go. A little bit more if we can. I got enough to make another four right there, boy. I'm going to go in the oven. I'm going to bake, and my oven has already been preheated at 375 degrees. Let me work nice and clean. You see, it totally, totally, totally filled up all the way to the top right there. And we'll come back in about 25, 30 minutes when they're nice and rising, and ready to go. Oh, yeah, baby. Check it out. Check it out. Look at this, folks. Look how beautiful they are. Look at those. This is an easy, foolproof cheese souffle. Everybody can make this. This is fabulous. So when they come out of the heat, folks, eventually they're going to fall a little bit. They're going to fall right at the rim. They're going to fall just a little bit. That is if you make them in advance and you don't want to eat them as soon as they come out of the oven. And you can even remove them out of the mold. So be careful because they're still a little hot. What I do is I shake them. I shake them and look, look beautiful. And voila, you see? Now you have right here... A light as a feather, beautiful brie, goat cheese, parmigiano, parmigiano souffle. Then you can serve with a, with a tomato coulis, a bell pepper coulis. You can put an arugula salad on top. And that's how you make them in advance. So if you want to make them in advance, you can take them all out of the molds, put them on a sheet tray, and when you're ready to serve them the next day, or, or the, on the, in the evening or your dinner party, just put them in a warm oven until the heat on the inside is about 150, 160 degrees inside temperature and they'll be ready to eat like you just take, took them out of the oven. Really, really simple to make. This is what they look like. See, look, it's still shaking a little bit. 